I often think of a Native American quote that says, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, but borrow it from our children. And that's what drives me in, in doing the restoration work here. You know, we look into the past to see what Rockford and Northern Illinois looked like hundreds of years ago. There's less than 1%, less than 1% of the natural areas that were here before the white men got here in Illinois that are still here for people to look at in the state of Illinois. So we need something to latch on to, it's a thread between here and our past. If you look out here into this prairie, um, you know, it's been a really dry year this year, and it, it's, it's doing quite well. It's very green, and everything's blooming, and it's more sustainable this way. And, and if we look at the district as a whole, you know, we look at our first site down at Sinisippi Gardens, founding site of the Rockford Park District. And it's in the past year, we've taken uh, the old, nearly 100-year-old greenhouse and, and upgraded it to the Nicholas Conservatory and Gardens. And, made it an extremely sustainable, high-quality flagship facility that'll lead the Park District into the future for another 100 years. The Nicholas Conservatory and Gardens was built during an economic downturn, and more than 1,600 people contributed to the capital campaign, which, which speaks volume for our community because they have such a strong connection to our, uh, to our riverfront and to Sinisippi Gardens. I asked Lori out a couple times, she said no. <laughs> the third time she finally agreed to go out. Knew that the Nicholas Conservatory was being built and they were accepting brick donations. So it just came to me one day that we kind of need to propose on a brick. And I thought, oh gosh, I have to say yes. Because <laughs> it's in, you know, set in stone. But the... I wanted to say yes. People have been coming to the riverfront, to the gardens. They bring their kids. The kids are now bringing their kids. And the story is being carried from generation to generation, which is so extremely important for us to continue that story. My first job as a uh, kid growing up was actually working as a playground leader for the Rockford Park District. It's so uh, interesting now having my own family and having their experiences start with the Rockford Park District like mine did so many years ago tell you we're very blessed to know that our park district reaches out to people of all economic levels all over the community north south east and west we have support for our young people to make sure that they've got a safe place to uh, hang out uh, during the summers safe places to go to and that's what it's all about if they were at home they would be there without any supervision you never know what they were going to be doing but here they learn social skills how to respond to adults how to respond to their peers, and that's great. When you see all the activity there, that's because of Danielle Potter. Now, since she's been here, there has been positive growth all over the place. I mean, you just, I, I guess you just see the need and you figure out a way to, to program that need. I mean, if I oversee 20 different programs at 20 different sites, and so this program in itself is unique. We're the only community center this far west of Rockford, and so there's a need to feel. We're down the street from a housing development, and you know, so we get a lot of kids that come from the housing, the neighborhood, and we have a lot of parents who drop their kids off. We go on a wide variety of field trips. We try to do weekly field trips throughout the summer. We try to expose our kids to a lot of different activities that they wouldn't otherwise get to do. Why go to summer camp if it's not gonna do anything more than I do on a daily basis? So I think everywhere in Rockford there's a need to feel, to keep kids engaged, to keep them moving, to keep them um, busy during non-school hours. The Summer Challenge Program is a cooperative program that is offered between the Rockford Public School and the Park District. They, as a group, as an organization, uh, clearly understand, as we do at the, at the school district, that the education of our children is a community effort, and uh, we're just very excited that they've been willing to step up uh, at, at this level with this type of partnership uh, to educate our kids in such a unique way. You know, when we think of summer school, I'm like, oh, wah, wah, I'm in the school, I'm in class with the same teacher, doing the same thing it's for four hours straight. However, here, you have the opportunity to go from one group session to another. And so this is an opportunity to, to keep them engaged during the summer, 
and it's an, also an opportunity to maintain their math and reading. We all know when kids take that summer break, you know, um, teachers have to catch up the first month or two of school. This gives, you know, students an opportunity to maintain where they left off and hopefully they see some increases. Even though this is summer school, it's kind of not conventional in terms of, of, of school. We're not uh, just teaching out of a book about a garden. Um, we're actually having them live it. I am super grateful that Rockford Park District is here. It, it really gives our kids something to look forward to. Um, a lot of the parts of recovery and the addiction is boredom, and so a lot of times kids are saying, I want to do something I've never done. There's something to be said for, for a, a, a hard day's work. You know, when you unload 900 bales in a day, you know that you have accomplished something. You know, because everybody, they, they all believe that those kids are nothing but useless kids and they, they, they have no skills, no ability, no, no nothing. All they want to do is lay around and, and drink and, and shoot up. And, and that's not true. They just get caught up in a, in a quagmire of peer pressure and life and, and everything. He's taught me discipline, you know, keeping my word, uh, patience. Um, you have to have a lot of patience to bail hay. It's pretty hard. Um, you know, helping people out, you know, I never really, I mean, I never did that when I was using. Uh, I couldn't do that. Sometimes I think they're just lost and they just need a little bit of help and a little bit of a push to get, find it in the right direction. You know, I just had, I had a year clean. I'm doing summer school. I just got my license, which is kind of crazy. I don't know, like everything's just kind of working out right now, so just kind of serene. Does my old fat old heart good to see these kids out here and doing good. Rockford, Illinois, being Sports Town USA, has been on top of the amateur sports market for several decades. Well, recently, many other communities around this country have taken a lot of the things that we've implemented, a lot of our ideas, and incorporated them into improving their facilities. Reclaiming First is just what it says. We have designed and are putting in place the kind of programs and facilities that will not only reclaim any of the amateur sports tournaments uh, that we've lost to potential competition, it will maintain what we have, which is nearly $20 million economic impact on our local community each and every year. Our goal is to double the number of fields, the number of facilities, both indoor and outdoor, in the next three years so that we can double the impact that sports and athletics have on not only the local citizens to be able to have world-class facilities to play in each and every day, but also to bring visitors to this community. Because people are always looking for new experiences, looking for an improvement over last year. And that's really what we have to look at. We have to look at, look at down the road. We have to say, where is the puck going? We must take our business, our facilities, our programs, and put them out into the future where the future of amateur athletics is going. And if we can build, operate, and maintain those kind of facilities, we will continue to draw thousands and thousands of people to this community, to our amateur sports tournaments, and thus help this community to grow, develop, and become even more of an economic driver and engine in this community we have in the past. To some of these kids, Every time they get on the field, every time they touch a ball, every time they contribute to the success of the team, it's their Super Bowl. And that's what's great about our business, is there's no other business in the world as great as ours, of helping people enjoy life. I have a son who uh, had a brain tumor when he was a baby, and he had some challenges and some ability issues, but always really kind of wanted to be a part of the crowd. So in the back of my mind, I'd heard and read about different programs that were doing buddy programs where kids with special needs could play ball with somebody that would help them play ball. And so I approached the park district and I said, here's what I want to do. I want to run a buddy baseball program. I don't know anything about putting it together. I just know that I want to do it. This is my idea and I want you guys to help. And I got an immediate yes. Now that we're in our fourth year, it is a cooperative effort. We both put our time, energy, and resources in it. We have kids of all abilities and disabilities. We have over 120 kids that play. The program is amazing when you watch our kids get out there on the field and have somebody 
either help them run or um, hit the ball. Um, we have kids in wheelchairs who um, have two buddies. One hits the ball and one runs for the individual. The parents have had kids who've never been on a team. So many of their brothers and sisters play ball, whether it be a soccer game or a softball, baseball, volleyball at school, and our kids sometimes don't have a place to be or to play. We have Matthew Lapp up again. He has a blast, and his mother and dad and his family, his grandparents, are just, oh my God, they are loving the fact that Matthew's playing ball. When he hits the ball, he'll clap for him. First he throws his bat and he claps all the way down to first base. And that's the highlight of the game. I was just waiting for that little Matthew to get up to bat because he is having a ball and he signs at home when it's at baseball night. The first year when I did the program, I got it set up, got it going, got it rolling. And my son said, I don't want to play buddy baseball. I said, are you kidding me? And I thought, well, that's all right. <laughs> you know. But um, yet the second year he was ready to play and he's played past two years and again we'll play this year. He loves it and his ability has is, is really improved. He doesn't need to run with his cane anymore and so um, tonight when he bats he will be up there without his cane which will be huge for us to know that the kid who had to learn to walk all over again um, is now able to go without his walker, his cane, his wheelchair and he's going to run to first base alone. And I never thought that that would be something and that's the credit that I take for the program is the fact that my kid continues to uh, to grow and able to do more things on his own, like the other kids. When you really feel what a parent, what a child, uh, someone just achieving just something really small in a program, when you see that, when you can feel that, when you can experience that with them, it makes you jump out of bed every day, get back to work the next day, and say, this is all worth every bit of the effort.